Hi, I'm Larry Whitmer and welcome to another Random Act of Anatomy. So today's video will be similar to some others that we've done in the past where we'll go into this room over there, our prep lab, uh, where we've got lots of skeletons laid out. Uh, these are the results of uh, the dissections and anatomical preparations that we've done, done by our, our undergrads and grad students and also my, myself. I'll sometimes come in on the weekends and do some dissections and putter about with the skeletons. Um, I find it relaxing. So let's go ahead and have a look and see what we've got in here. So basically what we have laid out here are the skeletons after they've come out of the dermestid beetles and after that they have uh, come through a cleansing bath of hydrogen peroxide um, and, and ammonia. And so let's see what we've got laid out here. So here we've got um, a nice little cormorant. We get lots of cormorants in. There's a very delicate looking um, green heron right there. Come down here, here's a tiny little guy. This is a very delicate little guy too, which is a common turn, a seabird, which is appropriate because it's Saturday, seabird Saturday. Here's a really interesting one, an unusual one called a turico. Um, and turicos are interesting for lots of reasons. We can see here, this is kind of cool right here. Um, they uh, only have these really impressive looking quill knobs where the, um, uh, uh, the feathers will attach. Uh, here's sort of an isolated little piece of a Siamese crocodile, the squamosal region, uh, for a project that grad student DJ Morgan and I are working on. Here's a headless guy, another seabird, an Audubon shearwater. Its head is actually uh, diverted to dice CT and micro CT, so we'll, you'll see some results of that eventually. Um, here are a couple of, of uh, tundra swans, very large birds. I could do a whole random act of anatomy on, on these guys. Very interesting. These are the kind of birds that will often, um, or always, take part of their trachea and they send it right down inside the sternum, which is crazy and very interesting. But also what's interesting about these particular ones is they've got some pathologies. So for example, you can sort of see, here's a normal looking leg, but this one has a couple of pretty nasty pathologies. This one over here, also has a pathology. Lydia Giesecke, who dissected this one, discovered an incredible tumor as soon as she opened it up in the shoulder area. Uh, here's the normal uh, coracoid and scapula, but on this other side, the whole, air, whole coracoid is basically blown up by the tumor. And here's part of it that we can see right there. Very interesting. So here is yet another cormorant. Um, here's a nice ibis right around in here. Here's a um, barred owl, and I love owls, very interesting. This one's pretty interesting because the distal end of its humerus right there has a terrible pathology. The other side right there shows what it's kind of supposed to look like, uh, but there's the pathological side. This is a really interesting specimen right here because it's a really young red-tailed hawk. And what's interesting about that is these very young birds often lack the fusions that'll take place as they get older. In this case, we can sort of see the um, carpal metacarpuses right here that basically have all of the bones unfused. You can actually see the sort of the semi-lunate carpal, which is something we talk about in dromaeosaurs like, uh, like Deinonychus and Velociraptor. Once again, Seabird Saturday. So here is a um, albatross, just a fantastic ocean-going bird. Um, this one is from Hawaii. Here's another really interesting bird, sort of a global, almost a global distribution, uh, osprey. And osprey have these amazing talons. We can sort of see right there, very powerful birds, um, an incredibly long hooked bill, very interesting birds. Right there is a little cooper hawk. We get tons of cooper's hawks in from the wildlife rehab facilities. Um, here's a really nice bird, always very interesting. Uh, which is a northern gal uh, gannet, a northern gannet. Uh, and these are plunge divers, appropriate for Seabird Saturday, uh, and have very uh, pretty striking adaptations for withstanding those um, high velocity plunges into the ocean. Here's a good old red-tailed hawk, one of the most common birds you'll see around common predatory birds. Um, here's a laughing gull. Laughing gulls are also very common um, in wildlife rehab, uh, sort of victims of of the fisheries um, industry. Here's a little egret looking really nice. Here's another really common bird um, that comes into us, a great blue heron. 
Uh, these get commonly injured. You can see this guy right here has got some horrible fractures, probably a, a roadkill, I don't really know. Um, here's a white ibis. These got, birds are really interesting. They're really common in some areas of Florida where they're just sort of hanging around garbage and waiting for humans to drop a french fry. Uh, this is a really interesting bird right here. This is a super young bird too. Uh, that's, it's a heron. It's probably a, um, maybe a black crowned night heron, not entirely sure. Um, and what's interesting is again, that a lot of the fusions that we would normally see haven't happened yet. So typically the astragalus, one of the ankle bones fuses to the, the tibia and forms the tibiotarsus. In this case, it's actually still separate. If I nudge that away, you can actually see the ascending process of the astragalus there actually uh, free from the, the tibia itself. So really quite interesting. Um, here is a crow, an American crow. We get a fair number of crows in right here. Here is a, um, what's becoming a very common bird, which is a black vulture. Throughout much of their range, they're um, increasing, maybe even displacing uh, turkey vultures. We are just loaded with black vultures around here. This one is actually from, from Florida though. And finally, what we have here, uh, last but certainly not least, is an Ohio bobcat. The Ohio University has the bobcat as, as our mascot. And Ohio University has been partnering with the Ohio uh, Department of Natural Resources to, an assess, to, base, to basically assess the populations. And so uh, the ODNR is picking up uh, road kills and then they come here for study. And then we do dissections and, and skeletonization. Here you can see the, the, the little short, cute little bob tail that gives these animals um, uh, their name. And so the next step with all these specimens is for them to be um, accessioned into our collection and then numbered, all the bones numbered individually, and then they'll go into our permanent collection. So that was today's random active anatomy. Thanks for watching.